Well, good morning, good afternoon. This is Scott over at Ready Squirrel. Today's article, Canned Meat, a must-have survival food. Unless you're raising livestock uh, for meat, you're at the mercy of the industrial meat complex in a SHTF situation. Should hit the fan. As I'm writing this article today, um, I'm noticing that uh, on, uh, online retailers are out of canned beef, pork, and chicken, or uh, they're limiting how much you can actually purchase. Uh, I went over to one of the companies or retailers I was looking at was um, uh, Costco. I was look, wanted to look at some of the Kirkland brand. Uh, I went the wrong way on that. And uh, they're limiting you to an order of one six pack of the, um, the canned chicken. So just an FYI. We know how things move. I know there's a lot of people out there right now that are a little bit scared uh, when it comes to food shortages. I don't know what to believe, to be honest with you. 13 reasons canned meat is an excellent survival food. And I should probably say this is Scott with ReadySquirrel.com. Uh, bang that like button, subscribe, show us some love with some comments or any ideas you've got. I'm trying to get this beast rolling and it's uh, taking longer than I thought. Uh, okay, back to it. 13 reasons can, uh, canned meat is an excellent survival food. And one more thing, sorry. If you want to read this article instead of look at me and read, uh, you can go over to readysquirrel.com and this uh, article or video is in the form of um, a blog article. So the 13 reasons canned meat is an excellent survival food, excellent protein source, excellent source of fat, which is often difficult to come by in a survival situation. Uh, it's easy to prepare. There's no freezing, thawing, or pre-cooking necessary. You just pop the can. You can warm it, cook it if you want to, but you don't have to. It's shelf stable. It has a long shelf life. Most canned meats will last five plus years beyond the best by date. When, when it comes to canned pork, canned chicken, uh, canned beef, and canned turkey, I think those are kind of the staple canned uh, meats. You can actually get much longer life out of the cans if they're properly stored than the five years that you see. Um, and I'll talk about that down below. But there are some of these uh, like survival canned meat companies are coming out now and saying that they've got uh, uh, canned meats that will last 15 to 25 years on the shelf. So. Um, Unopened cans don't need refrigeration. Pre-cooked so you can eat uh, meat right out of the can without heating it. Um, commercial canning sterilizes meat, and that's something I'd like to say. I'm not talking about home canning right now. I may do another article on that, but I don't have the skill set at this point. I'm going to have to can some of my own stuff before I start doing articles on it. Um, commercial canning sterilizes meat. Sealed cans are excellent container for long-term storage. Uh, Canned meat remains edible far beyond the best by date. In a pinch, you can place the can directly on a campfire uh, or the coals to heat. There's some, uh, you know, some of these cans have kind of a rubber lining, so, you know, you may be dealing with, uh, with the can exfoliating some chemicals, but in an emergency situation, if you want it heated, that may be your only option. Uh, perfect for the Federal Emergency uh, Management Agency, FEMA, 72-hour emergency kit. Uh, canned meat's excellent for rotation and long-term survival pantry. And canned meat loses very little, little of its nutritional value in the canning process. Tip when storing meats for long-term uh, storage or for a long shelf life, avoid mixed meat soups that include vegetables or tomatoes. These ingredients reduce shelf life. I'm not saying don't, you know, don't keep canned soup, don't keep... Uh, like you know, denty more stew, uh, stew and stuff like that. But you should also have some just meat stored because it does have a longer shelf life. Um, tip: Canned meat and oil has the most calories and nutrition. Warning: I think most of us know this, but just to, to get it out there, once canned meat is open, it must be eaten immediately or must be refrigerated. Um, for this reason, choose cans with a serving size that can be eaten in one meal. If you don't have refrigeration, so. Try to figure out, you know, you can use like the big canned hams and stuff like that if you've got a, you know, a family of four or if you've got a group. But if you're just one person or two people, 
you're going to want to really pay attention to serving sizes or how big of a can you get because once it's open you got to eat it 22 of the best types of canned meat for prepping survival and storage this is more of a, one of those lists to get your juices flowing uh, and then I've got the fat, the protein, the serving size, and the calories. Again, this is to get your creative juices flowing. There's a million different ki can kinds of canned foods, a uh, million different options. Uh, these are m the main meats, the store-bought meats that I could find. Uh, there's 22 of them. And if you have any suggestions or if you know of other meat sources, uh, canned meat sources, let me know. Uh, tuna and water, uh, turkey, salmon canned sardines, canned shrimp, canned oysters, canned anchovies, uh, canned crab meat, canned mackerel, uh, kippered herring, canned chicken, canned roast beef, canned spam, uh, canned ham, canned bacon, canned hamburger, uh, pulled pork, deviled ham spread, pate, Vienna sausage, potted meat, and corned beef. I don't know if that's exhaustive or not. That's all I could find. Down below, I'm going to have, uh, I put like, I think, eight different uh, manufacturers or retailers that carry this kind of stuff and uh, kind of pointed out some of the better quality meats and the stuff that I'm seeing on Reddit and the people are uh, actually buying in bulk. And it's all over the map. I mean, if you want to, you could get most of the stuff, just get it at the grocery store. Uh, how do you use canned meat? You can make anything with canned meat that you can with fresh meat or just about uh, just think of it as an ingredient in the meals you make, but just with one less step. You don't have to cut the meat up. You don't have to cook it. It's pre-cooked. You open the can, and you can, again, you can use it as an ingredient in the meal, uh, or you can, you can heat it up and just throw it on top of some rice or noodles. Uh, there's so many ways to use canned meats, it's impossible to give a comprehensive list. Uh, the following are some ideas to give you or again to get your creative juices flowing. I need to think of another term. That's even starting to annoy me. Uh, 32 uses for canned meat. The most flexible meats are going to be beef, chicken, and pork, but don't discount fish and seafood. They provide nutrients that the other meats don't. Um, so uses for canned meat, and I mixed these all together. I didn't break them down by meat type. Uh, eat pre-cooked meats cold out of the can. Heat and eat, mix with rice and or beans mix into cooked pasta, eat on a cracker or bread, uh, mix with forage salads or produce from the garden. Pork, beef, and chicken can be used in the same recipes you use for fresh meat. Uh, canned corned beef is a staple in the Bahamas, cooked as hash over rice called fire engine. Beef and egg noodles, chicken noodles, uh, mix into top ramen, salmon patties, chicken and beef stroganoff, tacos, enchiladas, burritos, cabbage rolls, uh, chicken pot pie, orange chicken stir fry, uh, beef chicken or pork sandwiches, uh, stir fry with any available fresh or forage vehicles. Uh, vehicles. <laughs> it's been a long day. Stir fry with any available fresh vegetables and eat on white rice. Uh, sardines or kippers on toasted bread. Um, I actually watched a video on the kippers and uh, people go wild over those things. So. I remember when I was a kid, my dad always liked smoked oysters. We'd eat them with crackers and cheese. I always thought they were pretty good. Um, beef, chicken, or pork with stewed dried beans, spaghetti, chili, fajitas. Uh, heat meat and barbecue sauce and eat on bread or rice. Chicken salad. Make a gravy with meat and canned mushrooms and pour over rice. Uh, salmon spread on crackers. Meat chowder, casserole, soups and stews, goulash, and sloppy joes. I basically just went out there and looked at a whole bunch of stuff to come up with some good ideas. I'm not putting recipes down because there's so many recipes out there that uh, it just didn't seem, I don't know, didn't seem like the best use of my time. You guys can pick and choose what are these recipes you think you might want to use and go out and, and find the recipes. Um, you can look at the retailers down below for links to recipes by meat type. Uh, I think Spam has got a really good website, and well, we'll see when we get down there. But I linked some of the meats so that you can actually go over to the website and they'll have some ideas uh, for it. One of the most popular seemed to be uh, fr uh, canned meat and fried rice, and another one that was seems to be really popular is canned beef with egg noodles. Five reasons to avoid canned meat as a survival food. I'm not saying that I'm going to avoid it for this reason. 
I'm not saying that you are because I think in an SHTF or in a, you know, an emergency situation, national a natural catastrophe, uh, we can see past some of this stuff. But if you absolutely can't see past it and you want to rotate it into your regular diet, maybe you're going to want to go with a more expensive um, canned meat that doesn't have these tendencies. Uh, so avoid it because it's got high sodium content. So if you're uh, sensitive to salt, avoid canned meats. But I did notice when I was doing research for this, like even Spam has a low sodium uh, can of Spam. So you can look for that. Nitrates are often used as a preservative. Yes, they are. Spam uses nitrates. Uh, but I was actually surprised, again, I'll talk about it down below, how few ingredients are in Spam. I thought it was like a mystery meat, but it's really not. Um, Gravy, juice, or additives are included in the canned weight, so you're not really getting as much meat as you think. Um, I think it's Keystone that doesn't add water. Uh, we'll talk about that down below. Uh, this is going to be like your own thing. I don't know. I'm not making a judgment call on this next one, but the use of antibiotics, poor living conditions, and animal feed are suspect in some cases. So some of this food... Like, if you're getting at the dollar store, you know, it may not actually be packaged in the United States. It may be packaged in the United States under a, you know, a conglomerate with using GMOs and all that stuff. So if that's a concern, there are options out there, but they cost more. Uh, canned meat is not good for bugging out unless you use a catch system, which is basically, you know, beforehand. Maybe you've got a bug out location or you've got woods close to you. You can go out and you can, you can store catches of... Uh, food and gear in case of an emergency and then you can hit your catches on the way to you know from point A to Z if that's what you're willing to do cans caught way too way too much way too much to uh, carry out on foot and I'm not saying you can't have you know a, can, a little can of Vienna sausages in your you know your bug out bag but uh, definitely don't want to plan on carrying you know six big cans of denty more stew in your backpack uh, tip, if you're willing to pay the price, you can get canned meat that is considered healthy. Brands that are organic, free-range, grass-fed, antibiotic-free, and sodium-free are available, and wow, will you pay for it. They're expensive. How should I store canned meats? Uh, just, just about exactly the same way you store everything else in your long-term emergency food preparedness. Uh, store canned meat on a shelf up off the floor. Keep your storage area clean, dry, and cool. Uh, store 18 inches from the wall so air can circulate. Um, Store at or below 75 degrees Fahrenheit, but above freezing. Uh, cold, super cold freezing temperatures are just as bad for cans as um, getting too hot. Rotate your canned meat with FIFO first in, first out, a method used by restaurants. Basically use the oldest can first and constantly be doing that and replenishing the stuff that you use. Ten cans of meat you should never eat. If you want to go beyond the shelf life, this is something that, that you're going to want to read up on. I do actually have a USDA PDF down below uh, that talks about this. If you're going to go beyond the shelf life, even if you're not, I guess I should change that because it, do, it depends on how the, the cans have been treated. But you want to know the, sand, the, the signs or the look of a bad can, and that's what this is. Avoid using cans of meat that show any of the following signs, leaking or stained. Uh, swollen. Swollen is often a sign of botulism. Rusty cans, badly dented, cracked, foul odor, missing or lo uh, loose lids. Meat in the cans is changed in color or odor. When in doubt, throw it out. Don't taste test meat you're not sure of. Like this is going to be situational, right? Uh, you know, if, uh, if you've got one can of something left on the shelf and no food, you know, obviously if it's, if it, if it's, foul you're not going to eat it but uh, this meat in the can is changing color or odor you're going to have to make the determination I guess that's going to have to leave it at that how long will uh, canned meat last this is uh, controversial um, canned meat has a best buy date of 3 to 15 years there's even a company out there now saying 25 years but it can actually last longer According to the United States Department of Agriculture, a best if used by date or a before date is not a purchase or safety date for canned meats. It in indicates peak quality, not that meat is bad. So 
you can if you want to be safe you can go by the best of buy dates you know it's five years out five five years from manufacturer say three years from manufacturer depending on what kind of meat it is but that's not an indication that the, that once that best buy date comes up that's not an indication that the canned meat's bad and that's when you go back up here avoid using cans of meat that show the following signs if you want to start testing out cans that are that go beyond the best if used by or before date you're going to want to get really familiar with with the signs of a bad can again leaking or stained swollen rust badly dented cracked foul odors missing or loose lids meat in the can has changed color or odor when in doubt throw it out and don't taste test meat you're not sure of you know if you taste test something with botulism that you're going down for the count or you're going to get super sick uh, what affects canned meat shelf life so I think this is where the controversy comes to play. So you've got a best by date, and that best by date is only going to really be good if you've followed the best practices of food storage we talked about before. So if you're not looking at what a bad can is, there's really no hard fast rule as to how long a can of meat is going to is going to last. You know, you can actually look on YouTube right now. There's a guy, oh geez, I wish I remembered his name. I should actually post a link on here that eats old MREs. I just watched him eat. He literally cooked it up in a pan. He ate meat from a, a, uh, I think it was an 1896 food ration from a can. He ate. He was eating it. I'm not advocating that. But what I'm saying is, five years is, is really nothing. I, I think that canned foods canned meat and other canned foods can last much much longer with them than that you just have to be a little suspect you have to be careful you have to you know you have to pay attention to to the, the quality of the can and the food in it when you open it if you're going to go buy that uh, best best buy date because that's actually not mandated by law that's something that companies just do do on their own okay so what affects canned meat shelf life the canning process the type of meat in the can how the can is stored, how the can is handled. You know, that goes back to if you drop a can on the floor and it busts the seal or dents it, there's a possibility that the seal somewhere in the can has been broken. That's why they say don't eat um, dented cans or food from a dented can. And the condition of the can when it's open. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, Food Safety and Inspection Service, there are three dates that may be on food products. A sell-by date. That tells the store how long to display the product for sale. You should buy the product before the date expires. The best if used by date or before date, and that is re recommended for best flavor or quality. Again, it is not a purchase or safety date and is not required by law. And third, a use by date is the last date recommended for using the product while at peak quality. The manufacturer of the product has determined the date. You'll see a use by date on things that are more perishable, like uh, milk, uh, you know, cheese, butter, the stuff that you get in the, the cold sections of the grocery store. Usually on canned foods, you're going to see a best if used by date or before date. So if you, let's say that the best by date or the best if used by date on a can is five years out, the food can still be good quite a bit way beyond that date, but there's a possibility or and you don't know exactly when that date is, so let's just say it's the best by date. The quality, the nutritional value of that food will begin to diminish after that date. So that's something to keep in mind. But it's still food that you can eat if you're if you're starving. Uh, I've, down below, I've got the link to the entire USDA document concerning food product dating. You can see the link uh, under the resources down below. So, 10 popular brands of canned meats for uh, preppers and survivalists. Uh, number one, these are not number one like the best one. These are like number one for SEO on Google. Uh, Keystone, number one, packaged in Lima, Ohio with two ingredients, salt and meat. Uh, I read the reviews on Keystone and pretty high reviews. Keystone canned meats are what they offer, the products they offer. They offer canned beef, chicken, pork, turkey, ground beef, beef broth, chicken broth, and turkey broth. 
And I, if you head over to ReadySquirrel.com and you want to click on the link, you can go to uh, Keystone.com uh, recipe uh, section, and you can also you know check out what they've what they've got to offer. Whirling and Sons Inc. I put this up here. Uh, I I really didn't see any reviews on this. Excuse me. I put this up here because. Um, it's family owned and it's been around since 1896, 1896. It's still family owned. They started canning meat in 1966 and uh, they started out as a, a butcher shop in Burkittsville, Ohio. Um, they offer beef, canned hamburger meat, pork, pork sausage filling, chicken, and turkey. And then I've also I've got another link down there to the Whirling and Sons recipes. Spam. Unless you've been, I, this is tongue in cheek, uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you recognize spam as mystery meat in a can. In actuality, it only contains six ingredients pork with ham, salt, water, potato starch, sugar, and sodium nitrite. That sodium nitrite is what some people are concerned with. Spam has kept more people alive than any other canned meat on the planet. It's, it first became popular during World War II in places like the Hawaiian Islands. It's part of the culture. You can find it in McDonald's and Burger King sandwiches on the islands. Uh, spam canned meats, it's all pretty much the same thing. And I've actually got Spam split out from Hormel, but Hormel actually owns Spam, so keep that in mind. Um, it's basically Spam. They Spam brand offers Spam. Uh, you can get Spam Classic, Spam Light, Spam with less sodium, uh, Spam with Hormel Bacons, uh, Spam Hickory Smoke, Hot and spicy spam, jalapeno spam, teriyaki spam, black pepper spam, spam with Portuguese, uh, Portuguese sausage, spam with tochino seasoning, which is, uh, I had to look that up, it's a Filipino style uh, sweet f uh, pork, and uh, they have a spam spread also. What is the most popular spam meal? The answer is spam fried rice. I find spam interesting. It's just like, it's kind of a... Um, I don't know if America. I look at it in a way as it's kind of Americana. There's a museum, a spam museum, and uh, it's got a pretty rich history. Interesting, interesting facts about spam: 12.8 cans of. I need to slow down. I've been drinking coffee all day. 12.8 cans of spam are eaten every second. Spam is sold in 44 countries. 100 million pounds of spam was sent to feed troops during World War II. In the southeast. In Southeast Asia, spam is given as a luxury gift. The Hawaiian Islands eat 7 million cans of spam per year. Residents on the island of Guam, Guam consume an average of 16 cans of spam per person per year. And 8 billion cans of spam, spam have been sold. And that's The information is uh, complimentsofspam.com. You can have, head over to Spam's website to check out their recipes. There are chefs using spam. Uh, if you if you go somewhere to eat, I was actually uh, I wasn't stationed in uh, Honolulu, but I was actually attached attached there for quite a while when I was in the service. And like if you go somewhere, a local restaurant for breakfast, fried spam is like what you get with eggs and white rice. Um, it's so popular. It's in the restaurants. The chefs use it. They have festivals. They eat a lot of spam in the Hawaiian Islands. But if you head over to the Spam's website again, you can check out their recipes, and it's actually kind of a fun website uh, to, to take a look at. It's well done also. Okay, number four, Layman's. Layman's is a retail and online store that provides tools and food for people living a simpler life. Some of their canned meat products are branded Layman's, and some are not. They've been in business since 1955 and are located in Ohio. Uh, meat ingredients, meat and salt with no added added preservatives or water. Most of their meat products right now, what they have online, and they're out. Uh, they're out of everything that I looked at. Uh, but most of their meat products are actually Keystone right now. The only um, the only Layman's branded meat that I saw was actually their canned bacon. Uh, and there's another bacon, Yoder's. I was going to put that on here. But I couldn't find out anything about it. I, every website that I went to, so I, I went from company to LLC to corporation trying to find find out who makes Yoder's, and I was unable to find it, so I didn't put it on here. Um, I don't even know if it's 
if the people that are selling it, if it's like old stock or if it's something that's still being manufactured. But anyway, if you're looking for canned bacon, when it's in stock, Layman sells it. It's a pretty cool website. Um, they sell they have, they sell Amish products. They sell wood stoves. They sell like uh, kitchen utensils and stuff that you can use without power. So um, if you're a survival type, a prepper, off gridder, or homesteader, Lemon a Layman's makes for an interesting browse. And I just put their website. I didn't put the um, I didn't put the recipe website there. They have like 68 different canned uh, foods for emergency storage, and I think. Um, right now people are buying this stuff up like crazy and i don't know if it's if we're creating a shortage because we're being paranoid or if people are continuing to buy it as usual and they're not restocking i don't know what it is but a lot of these websites again they're making you uh, back order and i am going to be linking for affiliates and stuff at some point but i don't have enough views on my website at this point so i'm not getting paid from any of these companies this is just really uh, value added information for you guys to help you uh, with your research to stock your long term food storage. Uh, Wurtz's number five. Wurtz's is uh, veteran owned, located in Tiffin, Ohio. Their canned meat is farm raised without the use of antibiotics or homo hormones and it's GMO free. This is a really little, little website. This is kind of, I don't want to say it's a mom and pop shop, but it looks like it's pretty small. But this dude's a veteran and uh, the family has been farming the same land since 1852. This guy's a seventh generation. Uh, here's a little quote from the website. Hello, I'm Don Wirtz, and I'm a proud owner of Don Wirtz Family Farms and Wirtz Farm Market. My Wirtz family has been raising beef in Northwest Ohio since 1852. I'm the seventh generation of our family and keeping up with the family tradition. They offer uh, homegrown uh, beef and homegrown pork in a can. That's their products. And there is a link at readyscroll.com to the Wurtz recipes. So if you want to go check it out, you can easily hit the home button and go check everything else out if you want to. Uh, Kirk, Kirkland Signature Brand, Costco. I should have done Sam's on this, but I don't use Sam's Club. I use I use Costco, but I'm going to have... Actually, my that's not true. My wife just changed over to Costco because or to Sam's because where I live now, there is no Costco. It's like 180 miles away, but I haven't been to the Sam's yet. So I didn't do Sam's. I did Kirkland, which is Costco wholesale. If you belong, then you know about it. And if you don't, uh, look it up and see if there's one in your area. It's a little pricey to join, but I think it's worth it because the, the Kirkland signature brand stuff is awesome. Uh, like our toilet paper, uh, I drank honey in my coffee and my tea. Uh, uh, bulk olives in a jar. There's a ton of, of really solid products that are less expensive. And if you want to get some really good, really quality, expensive meat and stuff like that, they have they have really good produce and meat. But it's you're going to pay for it. Uh, we try to like have a list when we go into Costco, and we only get staples and we only get what we need because it's really easy to go in there and start filling your cart and blow your whole month's uh, grocery. Uh, bill in one go or bill uh, budget budget's the word okay so sig uh, Kirkland signature brand you have to have a membership uh, to purchase from Costco their canned chicken is super popular among preppers as is the roast beef the roast beef is hard to find I'm actually starting to think they don't make it anymore I know people are selling it like on Amazon but there's nothing about it on the Costco.com so um, I'm not sure. I can't answer that. I couldn't find any information saying we have quit making it. Uh, Costco also offers other canned meats in bulk, like uh, Libby's Vienna sausages, canned albacore tuna, and wild-caught sardines and olive oil. Their stock is always changing, so you'll have to check them out to see what they have. Uh, you can order Costco online. You don't have to have a, a retail store. We like to go to the store, so... That's why we're shifting to Sam's Club. Uh, Costco Wholesale Canned Meats, Kirkland Signature Premium Chunk Chicken Breast, Kirkland Signature sol uh, Solid White Albacore Tuna, and Kirkland Signature Wild Alaskan Pink Salmon. I put this on here because at the t when I'm writing this article, this is what they had in stock online. Uh, Hormel, number seven. Hormel Foods owns Spam. 
So this will cover home, Hormel meats other than Spam. Hormel is in the pro, uh, is in the processed and packaged in Minnesota. Oh, jeez, I hate it when I find a to uh, typo when I'm doing this. Hormel is processed and packaged in Minnesota. Uh, Hormel, and it's a it's a conglomerate. I'm not. There's no good. St um, there's no like mom and pop story or anything with this. This is a it's a corporation. So, uh, but the good side of that is they do stuff in bulk and it's less expensive. The downside, you're probably more likely to get some of those things in there you don't want. So Cornell uh, canned meats, smoked ham, chicken breast, white and dark turkey, roast beef and gravy, ham patties, corned beef, canned hold ham, pig feet, pork hocks, and spam. Armor, number eight, owned by a company uh, out of Chicago. Again, a corporation, Armor canned meats, potted meat, deviled ham, Vienna sausage, roast beef with gravy, corned beef, uh, and treat lunch loaf, which is actually like the competitor for spam. I've never had it, so. Uh, Libby's number nine, owned by Libby's brand holding based in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, corned beef, Vienna sausage, and roast beef. Bumblebee, Number 10, Bumblebee is owned by the Thai Union Group of Thailand. Uh, they're big uh, when it comes to uh, like seafood and fish. Um, chub, mackerel, solid white albacore, red salmon, oysters, crab meat, shrimp, and sardines. I've got a list of resources down here. Uh, one that you might want to check out uh, is this PDF on food product dating by the um, United States Department of Agriculture to kind of wire that in. This is Scott with Ready Squirrel. Uh, that's about all I've got today. Take care of you and yours, and I will talk to you next time. Have a great day, guys.